Hi, everybody. Thanks to be here. And uh, let's start with the presentation. So, first, very quickly, which is the agenda for the next 30 minutes. Uh, we will talk about software automation using uh, different tools, especially working with Python scripting. So we will see how to mix uh, these tools with the Python and how to realize uh, some interesting procedure to speed up uh, our daily job. Uh, this is not a strictly technical talk. It's not focused only on Python, but it's about using Python in a different way as, as a Swiss knife for um, doing whatever you want, basically. Simplifying our life and uh, enhance uh, our daily routine. The presentation is uh, divided into parts. The first uh, is a pure slideware, but I want to give you some concept uh, about software automation. And the second part are a quick demos of some example I found pretty interesting uh, about uh, automation. So let's start. Let me introduce myself. My name is Giorgio Canieri. I'm an Italian developer, technical writer, a US architect, blah, blah, blah. Of course, I'm a Python lover, so I decided to give this talk. And because I'm also a lazy guy, I decided to show you exactly how to use Python for automating repetitive and uh, not so interesting task at all. Why automation? First thing first. Automating repetitive task has three main benefits. The first, of course, is that automating task, you can save time. You demand to a Python script or to a third party um, tool, uh, the DV jobs, and um, frankly speaking, a good script is always faster than you at executing task. Second, if you write a script to automate a procedure or a recurring job, once you test it, you can be confident that the result is the correct result. While you repeat uh, tasks, uh, you can occur in, uh, in errors. Uh, doing this by using automation is uh, more and more, uh, um, more safe. <clears throat> of course, the keyword here is testing, because you have always to test uh, many times until you are confident with uh, the result of an automation script. <clears throat> and uh, third, uh, automating uh, helps you also to remain focused on what you're doing. If you automate, for example, a procedure to retrieve information from internet, you don't have to leave your IDE or your main application and uh, retrieve the information, but just you can type a few strings and have the data back without uh, leaving your uh, main uh, um, stream uh, or your main process. The second question is when to automate. There are three factors that you need to consider when automating tasks or when you, con when you um, plan to automate a task. <coughs> the first is execution time. So when a task is, takes time to execute, it's always a good candidate for automation. If you automate a long task, every time you run it, you save an incredible amount of time. The second factor is a frequency, because also tasks that does need so much time can be automated if they are run frequently during the day. So consider the short amount of time repeated by the number of times you run the task, and you have always a good save of time. And third, as I told you before, accuracy. If you um, have very delicate task, tasks and you need to rely on them, even if they are not uh, time consuming or very fre frequent, you can consider automating them. So what can you automate? Fundamentally, whatever you want. I have some uh, ideas. I'm giving to you some ideas. Uh, string manipulation. We will see it later. Information retrieving. You can automate how to retrieve, manipulate, uh, and uh, reformat data, mm, data manipulation, image management. We will see how it's possible to uh, easily manage images for rotation or resizing or whatever you want. And also document management, because if you are used to produce uh, 
often the same documents with only small changes, you can automate the mixing of data inside the document and produce new document. The tools. <coughs> uh, Python alone is not enough. You need a convenient way to run automation script and you need a convenient way to interact with them and get the result back. Shell is not a good candidate because to run a script in a shell you need to leave your application or ID, choose the right directory, run the script uh, remembering the name and the parameters of the script, grab outputs and so on. So I think that, so I think that Shell is a terrible candidate. At this point, you may think to write your own UI to interact with your script, but once again, this solution is weak because it takes time and you have to face different problems, like for example, software activation, interaction with third-party apps, uh, clipboard integration, reading and writing to the clipboard, Windows management, and so on. So, considering both the approach, uh, very, very weak. Uh, I will propose you the use of third-party tools, and um, I will show you a more convenient way to interact with automation script uh, tools uh, and so on. What are these tools I'm talking about? <clears throat> I divided these tools in uh, three categories. The, fir the first category is uh, command line tools. Uh, I mean tools that are useful to launch command macro and so on without leaving uh, the application you are using uh, in the foreground. These tools are, for example, Alfred for OS X, but there are many different tools for each platform. They create a virtual command line positioned um, in the center of the screen and uh, which automatically gains focus. So, so you have only to press a combination of keys, activate these uh, interface and do whatever you want. The second cluster are text expansion tools, tools that doesn't have a real interface but uh, that can trap your keyboard typing and uh, do something when a specific combination of tasks, uh, sorry, of keys uh, are pressed. So I will uh, show you later how it's possible, for example, to automate uh, link creation, retrieving information from browser, URL shortening, and so on. <coughs> And the third cluster, in the end, um, are tools that can fire action on uh, our script at a particular moment when a file system change. Generally, when you put a file in a folder, you can trigger an action, and this action can do uh, different things on the files that are put inside this folder. <clears throat> what software do we need? Uh, I'm a Mac user, so I will show you tools for OS X, the first column, the one in green. But uh, I wrote this table where you can see that there are alternatives for Linux and Windows, and the approach is quite the same. So you have command line utilities for Linux and Windows, text, text expansion utilities for Linux and Windows, and file system triggers for Linux and for Windows. I don't know because I wasn't able to find <laughs> something similar to Hazel or MADE. The approach uh, is the same. Once you think how to automate uh, and once you understand which are the um, parameters and the best practice you need, you can develop the same script on OS X or on Linux and uh, on Windows. About command line, I will show you two tools uh, <coughs> that are Alfred and Keyboard Maestro. They act quite in the same way. I prefer Alfred for uh, input management while I prefer Keyboard Maestro for output management. I will show you some examples so you can decide which is the best for you. <clears throat> so the first tool is Alfred. Here he has some screenshot. As I told you before, Alfred is very, do we have the pointer? Yes, okay. Uh, it's very simple. When you type uh, a combination of keys, it opens a command line in the middle of the screen. We'll see it in the demo in the, before, uh, in the next minute and um, you can type a command and something happens. Which is the magic that happens? This is a workflow written in Alfred, for example, where you can define some input, in this case the word home. You can define a process or actions that need to, to run, in this case 
are uh, Python script, and then you define an, out in, uh, an output, which is generally the translation. Keyboard Maestro uh, works in a similar way. It has a workflow. It's a little bit less graphic. It has a top-down logic where you put blocks uh, inside the workflow, but it's quite the same. You define uh, a trigger for the macro for the workflow for the automation process. You can call it in the way you prefer. And uh, the actions are run exactly in, uh, in this sequence with a top-down sequence. Third tool, text expander. It's uh, different from the previous two because uh, you have to decide which is the abbreviation and uh, in every application you type this abbreviation, for example, in a browser text box or in a text editor or uh, in your favorite ID. It fires uh, this script and replace the string typed with the results of the script. That's why it's called text expander. Last but not least, we have Hazel that works uh, um, as a workflow manager triggered by file system. In this example, I define a folder that I have on, on my Mac called CDN and then define an action called upload image. So every time I move a file inside this folder, this action is fired. <coughs> And how the action works, it checks if the file that is copied inside the folder is the right type and then execute the script. In this example, it automatically takes the file I passed it to, to the folder, check if it is an image file, and then uploads it to my content delivery network. Some ideas. Now I stop with the slides and uh, we can move to the demo part. And I divided the, the demo I will show you in three categories, uh, representing the three main blocks uh, of software automation tools. And we will see command line tools, text expansion, and uh, automated procedure using file system triggers. So, <clears throat> let me switch from the two modes. Okay. So, first example is NetInfo. Wherever I type uh, command and spacebar, Alfred opens. And as I told you before, it's a command line that is conveniently uh, placed in the middle of my screen where I can type, for example, NetInfo, and it automatically produce this output with all the information about my network. How does this work? In a very, very simple way. If I open the workflow manager in Alfred, you can see the netinfo action, which is only a one block action that fires the script. The resolution is not uh, the best point of, the proje of this project. But as you can see, <clears throat> it runs uh, some system commands to um, gain information, SCUtils, for example, from network uh, or VPN and so on. And then it passes to a convenient object which renders the output. So every time I, I, I write a net info, it fires the scripts, get the information, and produce this output. Very, very easy. The only way the, the only thing you have to take care is the format of the output because uh, with Alfred you need to use this uh, syntax. So when uh, an input is passed to the script via query, it returns uh, an output that needs to be a valid XML of this type. Sorry. Okay. This is the XML that the Python script needs to generate. You have one or more items that are the rows of the, of the output where you can specify a title, a subtitle, an icon, and you can specify also the value that is passed 
to the next step of the workflow when uh, a row is uh, clicked. And then you can also specify if uh, autocompleting or not. So if you, mm, so you don't need to type all the commands, but just the, the first part. Second example, just to show you other capabilities. When I type TZ, automatically, it creates a list of uh, timestamps in different time zones. I'm used to work with people coming from different uh, areas of the world. So without uh, leaving my workflow, opening, for example, a browser to check the time and so on, I just can type TZ and it does what I need. Third example is translate. Assume that you are writing an email or writing a document or something, something like that, and you need to translate a word, you can type TR and then the word, for example, casa, which is Italian, means house, which is the same in English and Deutsch, maison, and, and so on. You can also translate sentences Come estas? How are you? And so on. Unfortunately, don't speak neither Deutsch or French. And once you select uh, one row, it's copied to the clipboard and you can paste wherever you want. So you don't have to leave uh, to go on Google Translate, type the sentence, and so on. How is done? Translate. Translate. Why doesn't it work? Well, I, I don't want to waste your time, but this is a simple script that check the translation with uh, Google Translate. I can do, I can also create simple notes, for example. If I just want to remember to, to call uh, my friend Mario, for example, I can type call Mario and automatically, sorry, new note, call Mario, which is the typical Italian name and it automatically adds the action to a note in the scrapbook. Very, very simple. We can go on currency converting. You need to know how much is uh, 1,000 euros. It fires a script which go on Yahoo, in, in this case, I think. It uses the Yahoo Happies and do some calculation and outputs it uh, to, to the screen. Now, let, let's see something more interesting for uh, you developers. Pretty fine. Consider I have this JSON, for example. Okay, this is a JSON. This is a minified version of the JSON. I needed to pretty print it. How can I do that? I can simply copy it to the, to the clipboard, then type prettyfy, then choose JSON, and when I, passed, I paste, I have the prettyfied version of this JSON. I can do the same with uh, for SQL. For example, SQL. I work with database. I have a query written in the worst way possible in the world. Prettyfy, SQL, and then paste. I have a script that has a, a procedure inside that takes the, the, the passed SQL and provides the prettyfied output. Last example. OK, 
okay? Very, very easy. With this approach, you, can't, uh, you, you don't have to rely on a specific tool or IDE or something like that. You can prettify whatever you want in every tool. Text managing. Consider you have this list, for example, okay? This is a, a list of uh, member country of the UA Union. If you need to do some operation on each line of this list, you can conveniently copy the list, then activate Alfred, use uh, the txt uh, command, and then you see in the subtitle, you can use text or line to manage the list. If you use text, it considers all the list. If you use line, it considers every line, each line, sorry, of the list. So for example, if I type plus line plus okay, for each line, it appends a single quote at the beginning and a single quote plus a comment at the end. So I converted this list to a more SQL friendly format of list. But I can do what, whatever I want using the Python syntax. For example, if I want to remove the um, single quote and the comma, I can do line one, two, minus two. And it's the same. I'm using the advanced uh, string manipulation feature of Python to automate uh, this simple task. And the script, when it's fired, takes the list, splits it using carriage return, and executes the command I pass on every single line. Once more, txt line, for example, replace space with underscore. Simple. Next example, creating document. As I told you before, um, I have the necessity to create a different version of documents, just changing simple part of documents. So what I did is to create a template and then fill this template with information. In this case, I can type docs. It asks me which is the project ID, one, two, three, four. Tab, it asks me the author, Gianluca. Project name, go to the moon. Project area, dreams. Generate FS, and in the out alias, I have my document generated. Okay, you see project ID, project name, author, and so on. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yes, but writing this automation script takes time. I know, because to write, uh, for example, these scripts, it took me about three hours, but if you consider that I run this script many, many times during the year, I can save uh, a bigger amount of time than the three hours needed to write down the script. Then I can also act on files, for example not only on strings. If I go to, sorry, desktop, Euro Python, I have two images, the cathedral of my town, and if I, take, if I type uh, uh, option and spacebar, I created these actions. Copy file names to clipboard, copy file names to clipboard without path, Rotate clockwise, rotate counterclockwise. Okay, I type rotate and it automatically rotates the image. How it works? When I type uh, option 
and command bar automatically pass to a Python script the name of the file and then I can use a PIL library or whatever I want. Uh, I think I'm using here image, image magic to, um, to rotate the image and to do the, the proper command. Other example, Keyboard Maestro, as I told you before, is, a, is my preferred tool for uh, output. So if I, type, if I type command and M, automatically it creates a pers personal forecast with uh, the results for the next hours and next days. Nothing uh, tremendously complicated, of course, but uh, I want to show you how it's possible to output also a more detailed um, bunch of informations that are not only the, the single lines you you have seen with uh, with Alfred before. You can also work on CSV file, for example. Okay, this is a script I created for conveniently, conveniently display CSV files, uh, and you can do whatever you want. Last example, text expansion. I have uh, defined uh, some macros that uh, interact with uh, my browser. This is the first Italian newspaper. And if I'm, if I'm typing, uh, for example, in my text editor, double commas, see title, it expands to, it expands with the Chrome title. If I type C URL, it expands with the Chrome URL or C link H for, sorry, C link H for an HTML link or C link M for a markdown link. So I don't have to copy and paste uh, the single titles and URLs. Or C short, for a handy shortened link. If you see text expander, it works pretty, pretty simple. Get Chrome URL, when C URL is typed, this script is fired. And it can interact with uh, Google Chrome using Apple script in this case, because it calls an other script external script. Last category are file system trigger actions. Desktop. Okay, I created this folder called the resize and each time I copy, for example, image inside this folder, the image are automatically resized because I have a trigger that automatically takes the images passed to, um, to Hazel and fires a Python script that uh, does the magic. Okay. These were just uh, ideas of uh, what you can uh, automate. I show you some uh, needs that I had and that I solved using automation, but you can do fundamentally whatever you want. And the only thing you have to consider is how much time do you spend repeating a task and then how you can automate it. Just uh, as a last sentence, remember that you can do the same thing on mobile devices because, for example, on Android you have Tasker, on iOS you have a workflow Pythonista, and so on, that are tools that can automate repetitive tasks also on uh, mobile devices. We have no time to talk about, but you can use these tools. And, for example, Pythonista and Tasks supports also Python. Okay, thank, thank you all. I'm finished.
Yes, of the scripts. Yes, uh, he's asking me if there is a repository for the scripts. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a repository for each tools. For example, if you go on Text Expander site or on Alfred site. You have specific repositories. Maybe the solution is not writing uh, using Python, but other languages, but you can find whatever you want. If you want to look this example in the presentation, uh, there's a repository for the presentation. I, okay, or on my site uh, from the next Monday, you can find all the gists uh, of the example I show you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>